Everyman Driver Nation, as the title indicates, this is a rental car review because this week I'm spending a couple of days in my hometown of Portland, Oregon. Yeah, it's the Rose City. And I decided to pick me a 2015 Dodge Dart, which comes in five trim levels, SE, SXT, Aero, GT, and Limited. We have the SXT. It's a lot of letters. Let's get started. The Dodge Dart has some stiff competition in the five passenger compact sedan segment. Mazda 3, Ford Focus, Kia Forte, and the Honda Civic. There are three engine options on the Dodge Dart. You have a two liter four cylinder, which gets 160 horsepower, 148 pound feet of torque. That's on the base SE trim level. There's a six speed manual transmission as standard. Otherwise you can get an automatic for an optional upgrade. There's also a 1.4 liter in the aero trim level. That's a four cylinder, 160 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque. Again, manual transmission is standard. The automatic is optional. And the other three trim levels, which my includes here, SXT, GT, and Limited has a 2.4 liter four cylinder which has the most horsepower 184 horses and 171 pound feet of torque the estimated fuel economy rating on my rental car this week the sxt is 23 miles per gallon in the city and 35 on the highway the recommended fuel type is regular unleaded the dodge dart isn't the most flashiest of vehicles but i have seen them souped up quite a bit as far as the wheel size, my tester here, my rental car tester, has 16-inch rims, uh, 17 and 18 are available. Let's go ahead and take a closer look inside. Ha! I know a lot of you have said, uh, why are you always testing this? the upper trim levels that have everything on them? Well, that's what they come to me as. But fortunately for us, this rental car review, it is a much lower grade, a uh, much lower trim level, so I don't have the smart key entry. I'd have to uh, use a key or just use the key fob. Now it's unlocked. Cloth seats as opposed to leather. Actually, they're pretty comfortable. Now I do like this uh, display inside here, especially this instrument cluster. Let's go ahead and start it up first. We have to put the key fob into a spot and turn. Now check out this cluster. Looks pretty good, I like this. Rev her up. Two point four liters of four cylinder power. I am flooring it, it stays at four thousand RPM. Interesting. Normally you'd have one more item here on the steering wheel for uh, controls, but something's missing there because it's not an upper level. On the back side of both sides of the steering wheel, there are buttons here. This one adjusts the volume of the steering wheel. The other side changes the channels. So that's kind of a nice little feature when you're driving. Instead of having the buttons here for audio, you can just put your hands around the side and touch them right there. A little bit dark in here because we don't have a sunroof, but that's all right. And we have four old blank handles. I'll show you that once we do an impromptu backseat legroom and headroom. Overall, cabin feel is okay. The seats could be more bolstered, so I don't feel a lot of support going around corners in the car so far. And we've put, I don't know how many miles on it, uh, 60 or so. So just a, at least a good first impression. You gotta like this when you go to a rental car, they have the no smoking stickers right there, obviously, because who has an ashtray anymore? Anyways, uh, real basic um, center stack here. You can get an upgrade of an 8.4 inch touchscreen, obviously not right here, but that's where it would go. All the standard uh, climate control features there. Nice little pocket down there for storage pair of cup holders. I do have a storage right here, which I have from a bagel that I got earlier. Nice and deep. Storage in both side doors. Enough for a bottle of water, which is good. Spot here for some sunglasses, lights. One thing that is definitely missing, there is no USB port for charging your smartphones or other audio accessories. So I wish there was one of those because I have one with me and I'm driving around Portland and I need something to charge my phone, don't have it. No power seats, you have to pull this rod right here to slide this back or forth. 
I wanna make sure I have it in the right position so when we go in the back seat, you'll see what it looks like for me. Same thing on the side. These are just uh, manual uh, movements here to adjust the seat. All right, moment of truth. How comfortable is it back here? The door doesn't open up as much as I like, would like it to. Here is my driving position, I'm 5'11". I am all the way back, and here's how much room I have between my knees, almost three fingers in the back of the seat. There is some storage there, storage there as well. Headroom is a little bit on the tight side. I can sit up and, yep, I'm hitting the ceiling, no problem there. I do like the comfort of these uh, seats, even though they're the cloth material. This is a 60-40 fold-down split back seat, so we're gonna be able to create some more space. And there is an armrest here, a pair of cup holders, more stair storage below there, and there is a pass-through. On my car rental, there isn't any buttons that I can find on the inside of the car to open the trunk, and there are no buttons here on the trunk to lift it as well, so luckily I have the key fob. Double-click that, it comes up nice and easy. Now inside it says 13.1 cubic feet of volume for cargo space based on my research. It actually looks a lot bigger than that. And the way you fold those seats down is actually from the inside. There's no lever to do that from the outside. So what you do is you pull this like that and now you can create the more space, but it doesn't lay flush. Just below your floorboard, you have a, a tire there just in case and a jack kit underneath there as well. But decent amount of space, I suppose. It looks, again, looks bigger than it is. Personally, I do like the design of the tail lights. I think it looks pretty sharp having the, the lights wrap all the way around the back end. Just a couple of notes about the ride and handling experience in the Dodge Dart for 2015. Front wheel drive vehicle. Pretty smooth, not the best turning radius. I do know the car weighs around 3,200 pounds. It's got a 4.4 inches of ground clearance. Not that it's a big deal, but if you are taking on some uh, steep and uh, tall speed bumps, you might want to just uh, be a little extra careful. Otherwise, it's a smooth engine. I mean, it's not, this one is a little bit quicker, I would assume, versus the, the smaller ones, because it's got the 2.4 liter and um, 180 horses. So yeah, it does have a bit of a kick. And it's okay getting up to speed on the highway because I've had to get onto on-ramps, uh, navigating I-5 and 205 around here. But it has a bit of a whiny sound. That's been my experience so far. It does sound like it's you know revving up, like right now. Nice little kick, but you know I can hear a lot of the road, the engine inside the car. And again, as I said before, uh, these seats aren't very bolstered, so I feel like I'm I'm missing some support on my east side of my ribs. Hang on, we're gonna do a little bit of an acceleration test and merging test onto the highway. 40, 45, 50, a little over 4,500 RPM. Pretty smooth, you know that the handling is pretty nice, the suspension is good. Highway road noise through the wheels, yeah, I can hear a little bit, but it holds the road just fine. Steering is a little bit on the light side. But it's still holding, holding true. The MSRP range on the 2015 Dodge Dart is 16.5, a pretty decent entry point, uh, up to about $23,000 for the top trim level, and then you can add on the all the extras. But it doesn't look like that sharp of a car on the outside. Pretty basic, uh, pretty run of the mill, and kind of vanilla in terms of its styling. But then again, that's probably why this car is a rental car in the rental car fleet, as opposed to out there on the road so much. And that's why we had access to it. All right, thanks for watching this uh, car rental review here on Everyman Driver. I'm Dave Erickson. We'll see you next time.